I'm Jed Davis. Glad you're with us. We're breaking into regular scheduled program to get you more information on these severe storms that came through our area yesterday. The numbers going back and forth somewhere between 130 and 145 fatalities as tornadoes ripped across the state of Alabama. Yeah, Tanya, one thing I didn't know, I needed to bring my track shoes to catch up with Lieutenant Governor Kay Ivey. I turned around. She's running at the people's windows. She was bringing big bags of food. Lieutenant Governor Ivey, come on over here, please. I know you're busy. You're out collecting donations and just working hard. We appreciate you coming out here today. Well, let me just kind of step off to the side and show you. This is Crystal Cove State Park. We are on top of a huge cliff and you can see the waves rolling into the sand down below. Not a bad day to be at work. Police say that a man, Michael McClendon from Kinston, that's just about five miles down Highway 52 north of us here. Police say he went on a shooting rampage that started in Kinston when he killed his mom and his girlfriend then set that home on fire. Police say he then came down Highway 52 into the town where we are right now, Samson, and killed six adults and a child. Kim, I'm going to have to quiet down the crowd here. They got loud here for a second. Got to hear your play calling. Posting pictures of family members who are missing in Birmingham and Tuscaloosa. They're just out looking for love ones who they can't find right now. So uh, we will, of course, continue to follow that for you. Right now, our news partner in Birmingham, WBRC, is, of course, following this story closely as well. We're going to check in with some of their coverage. Right Today in Alabama. Good Tuesday morning. Welcome to Today in Alabama. An overnight shooting in the city of Montgomery. We'll get to the very latest in just a bit. I'm Judd Davis. Has arrived. I like it. <laughs> Looking nice. Yeah, overnight lows in the upper 50s and 60s. It'd be nice to wake up and not be muggy and hot already. I just wish I'd pay a little closer attention to the weather forecast yesterday. It was a little shocking when I walked out this morning. It is that much cooler out there than yeah, before. Yeah, and you get that little mist coming down as well, mm -hmm. and you get a little damp. It can yeah, be a little chilly oh, yeah, out there. So we warn careful. you, it yeah. is a lot different this morning. Feels pretty nice out. Jefferson County schools are actually closed today. The remnants of Tropical Storm Lee caused flooding and also power outages. Yeah, take a look at this cruise of a Montgomery man is recovering this morning after an argument turned violent. Police say the man was shot in a fight. It happened on Buckingham and Marlowe Drive in South Montgomery. The man was shot in the stomach. Emergency crews on the scene say he should be okay. No word on the name of the victim or if police have made any arrests yet. The storm, once known as Tropical Storm Lee, is still causing major problems in Jefferson and Tuscaloosa counties. And right now, the biggest issue is flooding. WSFA 12 News reporter Samuel King has the story. The news. Samuel, thank you. We have some new video to show you this morning. Check this out. The scene at Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, all over the city. Rain was coming down in sheets on Monday. Several inches of rain fell in the area, causing some flooding problems. And forecasters say the area could get up to a total of 10 inches of rain by the end of the day. We're following a developing story from out west. Monday was anything but a relaxing holiday for tens of thousands of people in Texas and also along the Gulf Coast. Yeah, what is left of Tropical Storm Lee is causing problems all the way out in Texas with strong winds fueling wildfires. And of course, in the southeast, the problem is flooding. Here's NBC's Kurt Gregory with more. Kurt Gregory. NBC News. All right, new this morning, Hurricane Katia is now a Category 4 storm with maximum winds at 135 miles an hour. Right now, the storm is still way out in the Atlantic. You can see it is moving very slowly. Forecasters say the biggest concern right now is the dangerous rip currents in the waters off the East Coast. Oh, for a lot of folks, it's back to work after a long Labor Day weekend. So what can you expect if you're heading out to the gas station to fill up this morning? Well, WSFA 12 News reporter Melissa Johnson joins us live this morning from the newsroom. Melissa, prices usually go down after Labor Day, right? Right, since the demand for gas usually from this time last year. Judd. All right, Melissa, never thought 251 a gallon would sound good, but it sure does this morning. It does. Yeah, I can't uh, believe it's already, I guess, over a dollar than it was last year. You just don't think about that. It's quite a bit. Melissa mm -hmm. Johnson live in the newsroom this morning. Well, if you're looking for a job, you might want to look up. Boeing expects the airline industry to hire close to a half million pilots worldwide by the year 2029. Of those, 97,000 will be in North America. Some airlines are even holding job fairs and reopening recruitment offices. Things not looking very good right now for the U.S. Postal Service. Today in Washington, lawmakers will talk about major financial problems it's facing. The Postal Service is looking at a $9 billion deficit for this fiscal year. The agency wants lawmakers to step in and start by removing a mandate that requires the Postal Service to make surplus payments to a retiree health fund. After the break, we'll check back in with meteorologist Josh Johnson get the very latest on what Lee is doing today from tropical storm to tropical depression and still causing problems. 
Oh, it's going to be a tough day for the folks in Samson, Kinston, and Geneva, just down Highway 52 behind us. We had a chance to talk to the mayor, and we'll get to that in a second. But just again, to kind of reset what happened yesterday, police say that a man, Michael McClendon from Kinston, that's just about five miles down Highway 52 north of us here. Police say he went on a shooting rampage that started in Kinston when he killed his mom and his girlfriend, then set that home on fire. Police say he then came down Highway 52 into the town where we are right now, Samson, and killed six adults and a child, then went on a wild shooting sprees. He came through downtown at the big little store right behind us. A woman was getting ready to pump some gas coming home at the end of her day, getting ready to go back home before she even picked up the gas pump. She was shot and killed. Police say McClendon then continued down Highway 52 heading toward Geneva. He shot another person on the side of the road. He shot the police chief of Geneva before he eventually went into reliable metal products and took his own life. Now, just a few minutes ago, Tanya, we had the chance to go down the road here, just a couple hundred yards down the road and see a home where one of those shooting took place. Reportedly, some family members lived there, and some people are being let inside that home. We did not confirm if that was family or friends, but you can see folks getting a chance to look inside the home. We're told the people there were killed out on the front porch. Then across the street, a sheriff's deputy's wife and child were also killed as the shooter left the scene. We had a chance to talk to the mayor. He knows the shooter and the victims. Uh, no Dean, or notice that may have led him to do something like this? No, not, not to my knowledge. Again, words from the mayor of Sampson just a few minutes ago. I did also have a chance to ask him about his former job where he took his own life just down the road in Geneva, down Highway 52, reliable metal products. The mayor says he doesn't think it had anything to do with that job, at least right now. He says he quit that job back in 2003, quite some time ago, and maybe just ended up down there at the end of a chase and went inside that building. But again, Tanya, we have learned there will be a news conference at 1030 in Montgomery, and our Daniel Curtis will have more on that coming up in just a few minutes right here. We are live in Sampson after a, a tragic series of events that happened on Tuesday. Judd, thanks so much. Bray's Barbershop in Tuskegee, Alabama. Who have? In this place. You have stole a man from me. You'll get more than just a haircut. My grandfather uh, really was the, the catalyst. You know, he started it. William Bray Jr. runs the shop now, and he's good with the clippers. But every once in a while, you can see he's a little distracted. I'm going to show you how to right, move, man. Y'all together. Right. It's a very simple game, but complexity is in it. In this shop, if you're not getting a cut, checkers is king. It exercise your brain. Yeah, and keep you on a thinking level. And this might be a little bit different than the checkers that you're used to playing. They are advanced checker players. It's kind of like someone hit the fast forward button. And their mouths might move faster than their hands. Pick them up, baby. Act like you ain't got no sense. My nickname is Babe Brother. Sidney Weaving, the notorious mullet be the superstar. Down, God. <laughs> Sometimes you even get a little song. I'm the king catcher. Yeah, I'm king the king catcher. catcher. Here comes one now. I told you don't sing that song. I don't like that. Before you sit down, you better be ready to make some noise. <laughs> Come in. Now the sound effects needed. You gotta go. Zah. Yeah, yeah. Zah. They stuck me at the rookie table, exactly where I belonged. It goes on all day, talking, Tighten it up. jumping, and most importantly, didn't I tell you I kill you by stealing? Having fun with friends. You better get that out my front. So who's the best? Well, that probably depends on what day you stop by. But if you listen, tell him who the best checker player. <laughs> I call Brook. No, uh-uh. I call Brook the best. I whoop you in Brook Bowl. I'm sure they'll let you know. In Tuskegee with photojournalist Jeff Harrison, I'm Judd Davis at Long County Road 12. I don't understand it myself personally. Uh... Willie Moss isn't alone. There's a crowd gathering outside the Notasolga post office and they want answers. I don't know. We don't know. They want to know why their friend Sammy, a longtime resident, is banned from the building. He doesn't bother us so. Sammy's got more friends in Notasolga than any other individual I know. Most of the time he just slept right over on that table. Okay, this is Sammy. So what's going on out here today? Well, we're supporting Sammy. 
It all started when one upset customer sent a letter to the postmaster. They said this was a federal building and that he didn't pay federal taxes and he had no business in here. So they're all joining forces to get Sammy back on the inside. And who better to lead this team than legendary Auburn football coach Pat Dye. We ain't worried about football, we worried about the cat. <laughs> And the coach has plenty of help. He's got a box and I paid for it just a few minutes ago. So you bought Sammy's bought own post office box. 173 is his post office box. 173. A cat with his own mailbox. You got two keys to it. And the key to this plan, stick together. And you know it's important <laughs> when Auburn and Tennessee can join forces for a common cause. He said he thinks Phil Fulmer was coming up. I saw Coach Fulmer coming up from around the corner. One of the pleasures of living in a small town like this is having a post office cat. I think it's a good little town. I've been here over 50 years. Sammy is a lot more at home around here than a fellow wearing a Tennessee sweatshirt and a Tennessee hat is. I can tell you that. <laughs> so for now, Sammy is trying to keep his record and his tail clean on the outside, hoping that one day soon he can reclaim his favorite spot for a cat nap. Until that happens, a big cat fight going on right now. <laughs> with photojournalist Jeff Harrison, I'm Judd Davis in Notasolga with Sammy the Cat out along County Road 12. I tell you what, Bob, it's like Vegas here almost. Things never stop going. People are coming and going all day long. Hey, at the Marriott here in Newport Beach, every day it's pretty much the same routine since we've been here. The team buses will come through right behind us. Out come the Texas players. Out come the Alabama players. We ask the questions. They answer the questions. Pretty simple. Well, today when the Alabama players came in, we thought we'd switch things up a little bit and see what would happen if they got a chance with the mic. If you were a reporter and you had to ask Coach Saban a question about this week's game, what would you ask him? Me, for real, I would, I would ask him a question, for real. I, I'm scared of him, for real. <laughs> I'd just tell him, great game. I probably wouldn't even interview him. <laughs> that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. Because, I, I mean, he's an intimidating guy. i will probably just have to, have to ask him uh, after, uh, after any win. You know, he don't really do too much smiling, so i will probably just ask him why he don't smile that much after the game. That's about it. I won't want to push his buttons because he'll, he'll let you know right quick. If you were the reporter after the game, what would you ask him? I don't know. <laughs> That's how I, I feel. Know. I don't know. <laughs> he'll probably snap on any question and stuff. <laughs> so I don't know what question I'd ask him. Even though he's not a tall fella, he's pretty intimidating, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He is. But, you know, I actually tell him, I was like, man, I mean, if you want to do something, you do something. You know, I actually called him out a couple of times. He'll tell me, uh, you know, anytime you want some 6'2", I'm right here and all that stuff. You know. Well, I'll tell you what, the questions will be very easy to ask if Alabama wins the game on Thursday. Maybe not so easy to ask if Texas wins. Joining us now, Kim Hendricks. She got in late this afternoon. Kim, glad to have you here, and I know we're geared up for lots of big coverage later this week.